The Florida Panthers with a big response on Wednesday night against the Boston Bruins where they got in the net front, got some special teams goals, chased Jeremy Swayman, and frustrated the heck out of the Boston Bruins. And now this series is all knotted up at one. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Thursday, May 9th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News. If you follow me on X at Monoman12, follow the show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore F. LA Panthers and shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's $150 with any $5 bet. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. So the Florida Panthers once again respond in a big way on Wednesday night where there was a little bit of questions on whether the 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 style of play from game one was going to carry over with it being a little tough to get the rebound opportunities on on Jeremy Swayman, where a lot of there were a lot of shots from both teams at first, but a lot of them missing that, a lot of them being blocked, and happened with both teams. And then the floodgates opened with Boston scoring, and then the Florida Panthers scoring. Six unanswered after that in, in a real physical game where you saw 12, a number 12 misconducts total between the two teams in this 6-1 to one Florida Panthers win over the Boston Bruins to tie this series at one. And joining me to recap this victory for the Panthers, he is formerly of Fox Sports Florida, host and producer of the Florida Panthers and the Marlins, and is, and is the producer for... FAU Sports in Boca Raton, Frank Fort. Frank, welcome back to the show, my friend. It's good to be with you again, Armando. It was, uh, you know, for a period it looked like, uh, you know, it was going to be a little dicey, uh, but the second and third period is absolutely dominant. And and when, you know, Swayman for the second game in a row makes an unbelievable save in the first minute of play, which was, you know, the other night it was on, uh, I believe it was Lundell tonight, it was Verhege, mm-hmm. and I thought, Oh no, not that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and you think about for for the Panthers and the Bruins, I mean, you also ha- had two games in a row where the Boston Bruins had too many men on the ice call. So there's so yeah. many different themes that carried over from games one to two. You also had the team who scored first ended up on the losing end b- right. between the two. So a lot of different themes that carried over to the to this one. But I mean, when it when it came to for for the Panthers, I mean, you saw how physical it was getting at first. I mean, you see Brad Marchand laying out uh, Ma- Matthew Kachuk uh, after he gets in the face of Jeremy Swayman. That was the big tone setter for this one. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's the whole. You don't like it when he when it's the, the opposition, but you like it when it's your when it's your team. And the mission that Matthew Kachuk set at first to 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 draw a penalty for the Boston Bruins uh, there. I mean, that that really set a little bit of the attitude. And this is, again, this is why you trade for a player like Matthew Kachuk to get to get a little bit of nastiness that uh, for 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 the Panthers. I mean, yeah, the the Panthers went to the locker room down one nothing um, after um, Charlie Coyle got his first uh, goal um, goal of the of the playoffs. And you're thinking, man, block shots, missing the net. And, and then for the Panthers, I mean, one. 156 into the first into the second period uh the the panthers tied up thanks to uh the boston bruins fumbling the puck getting it back to the point and then lawrence all alone and the fourth line frank creating two of them yeah. i know I, they getting lawrence getting that one on a tip in couldn't happen to a nicer guy but also the one the bar the first spark off goal where where it was the fourth line, Kalik Pozo creating on the forecheck and then getting your change necessary to keep it in the zone and, and keep those lines rolling. I mean, 
what what a, what a game what a game by the fourth line and and that was the least of the Panthers worries too in in game one so we we saw a little bit of 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 the fourth line getting it going on the night well you know what was the difference in game one it wasn't Boston Stars it was the depth mm-hmm. guy right mm-hmm. that scored the goals uh Steve Lawrence with an absolutely world class tip in I know there was nobody on him but that's that's still just an amazing tip in. And uh, as you said, Barkov happened to be on the ice. It was kind of the middle of a change uh, when Akposo was out there with him and creating that goal. Um, but I really liked the way the Panthers responded in the second and the third periods. And, you know, you talked about Marshan's hit on, on Kachuk, and it was a great hit. It oh, yeah. Totally clean, great hit. But what I loved, the, the fact that the Panthers – and how many times do we see clean hits – and the team goes back after the guy that makes the hit, even though it was 100% clean. The Panthers didn't do that. It was just, let's go play hockey. And, and I don't think there's, there's enough of that in the modern game when you see good, clean hits. So, you know, Kachuk's not going to change. Marshan's not going to change, uh, regardless of, of who hit who. It's just get up and still be physical and still play hard and still do be who you are. But you had to love the way the Panthers came out in the second period and boy, for me, you know, the Forsling goal with what three tenths of a second left in the second and then lose to early in the fourth and, and they're off to the races. So it was, it, it's a game I think they had to have. I don't think this is a tremendous matchup for the Panthers. You know, if you, if you held me down and say, who would you rather have played in the second round? I would have said Toronto. I think mm-hmm. it's a better matchup. Um, but that's not to say the Panthers can't beat Boston. They they did it last year. They didn't win in the regular season this year in all four games, and I thought Boston had their number a little bit. Uh, but it was a great bounce back. I, I think they absolutely had to have this one tonight. And also, uh, the fact that Paul Maurice went back to the lines that prior to Game 5, I thought that was uh, re- really key. And I, it's funny because even when Lawrence scored, I mean, they zoomed into Paul Maurice's face, and he was just – yeah. Like this, like not not please, and we could only imagine what was said in the locker room too, mm-hmm. uh, in between the periods, uh, uh, for for Paul Maurice and the and the team and uh, to the team, and also during the inner um in the middle of the TV timeout was was talking about why and so- spoke about, oh yeah, we got a, a few guys who were minus threes or minus fours in the in the last four periods, and look what happens. Tarasenko yeah. gets two shots on goal on the night too after not getting a single shot on goal since game two of the first round too. That's another thing about, like I said, something I said on yesterday's show, putting shooters around Alexander Barkov too for mm-hmm. for the Panthers. Yeah, and, because you know mm-hmm. you know it as well as anybody that you know Barky's a pass first, shoot second guy. I mean, mm-hmm. you saw the snipe on his second goal. I wish he would use that shot more. But you're right. You you have to have him with scorers, not playmakers. Um, so yeah, I thought I thought it was a good great move by by Paul to to go back to those lines. And, uh, and it worked out, uh, you know, and it had to work out. And, you know, there, there's only one way to play Boston. you got to match their physicality because you, you, that's what they're going to do. They're going to be physical. They're going to be in your face, and you've got to be prepared to match it. And I think the Panthers did, and there were, there were no passengers tonight. Everybody was, was bought in. Yeah, and and then when between the fi- the five minute mark of the with five minutes remaining in the second period, and then uh, almost almost a whole period without uh, allowing a shot, Bob Bob could have rested real w- rested real real well in that net tonight too, and and just the when the fact the last that, time that happened to Boston, fifteen yeah. minutes without a shot. I mean, I don't have the answer, but I, I I'd be hard pressed to imagine that that's happened in recent history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and the fact that the the Panthers were just well with uh, controlling neutral zone play almost had the double double amount of uh, offensive zone time too, and 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 even after that first period having to double the amount, it's just you're thinking they have to find a way to get through somehow, and 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 thankfully they did in that in that sec in that second period, and also great response by Aaron Eckblad to multiple sliding stops. Um, Gap control as well, battled battle along the boards, and uh, he was he he was the he he had the assist on uh, it, uh, it was that it was that goal that the fourth line uh, had right. the four check on. So when when they had their change, Ekblad was also the one who had one of the assists, and and the yeah, fact he, that he was ahead. better tonight, and he had to be better. Yes, you can't have a first pairing defenseman 
turn the puck over like he did in game one. And, and even Gus was, was not Gus in game one. And, uh, you know, I, I tweeted on X this week, you know, for me, and I don't think it's even close. Forsling is the best all around defenseman the Panthers have. Yeah. I think Zito, I think Bill Zito believes that too, given the extension he gave him in the middle of the season. But, you know, the first pairing wasn't very good the other night and Ekblad especially so. And, and they both bounced back tonight. I mean, what did they say? 92 miles an hour on the, uh, the Forsling goal. And with 3.3 left to go in the second period, that is a monstrous, monstrous goal to go to the third period. Yeah, with Sway Swayman uh, screened up front too. And uh, the Panthers, hey, they uh, they got to chase him, which I don't believe that there's going to be any uh, goalie controversy there and, and who starts uh, game three. I, I believe the Bruins will go back to Jeremy Swayman. Uh, I wouldn't put pin that loss on on the goaltender no, there. but I wouldn't either. And, and But... It, I don't think there would be controversy anyway because Boston all season long rotated them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they'd be doing anything different, right? Um, I get I get it. It's the playoffs, and that that's usually a different paradigm. But uh, I just think, you know, Jim Montgomery was just trying to change the momentum of the game and no use letting Swayman get, you know, it probably at 4-1 was probably out of reach um, and said, you know, just let, let, him, let him rest up for game three. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's that's definitely the mindset that I had when once we saw that that move made. But we're going to transition over to segment number two, where we're going to discuss more about our three stars of the game and the moment when we thought this game was won for the Florida Panthers and a, a, a playoff record for the Panthers that happened in this one. Uh, we're going to discuss that and more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. And there's no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you match candidates. Indeed does the hard work for you. Indeed shows you the candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your description immediately after you post so you can hire faster. Even better, Indeed is the only job site where you can pay for applications that meet your must-have job requirements. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volley with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Back on this Thursday, May 9th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your First listen of the day here on a Thursday here with Frank Fort, former producer for the Florida Panthers and the and the Marlins and currently producer for FAU Sports and uh, Frank. So what the Panthers had a little bit of a record here uh, on the night. So 76 uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling down to make sure I'm getting the number correct. 76 hits a franchise record and they as far as and. And the broadcast, thankfully, they did the calculations, too, as far as hits per game from round one, 52.5 that the Panthers had in round one. And to think that it's tw 25 more in, in game one in game two of this one. And I mean, you, you also think about it for the Panthers. I spoke about size advantage that the Boston Bruins had. They're in the top three. The Panthers are 17th. And man, what the Panthers had to do to play above their size in, 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 in a game like today, creating chances off the four check, uh, battle, battling out, battling it out and taking the eyes away from, from Swayman. I mean, th those hits and finishing ch their checks. I mean, when you see those 76 hits, what, what do you think when you see that? Well, as I said before, you, you, you know, Boston's going to, going to hit and both teams had over 70. So if you're not prepared to match that, you're going to be in trouble against that team. Because they'll try to intimidate you. That's that's who they are. They have 
yeah, they have they have a lot of skill, but they also part of their game is trying to be physical and you know trying to knock you off the puck and intimidate you and you know that sort of thing. So again, you don't have to be the biggest guy in the world to throw a good check. It's all about timing and it's about leverage. And so I thought they did a great job tonight matching that physicality. And how about Barkov with nine hits? I'm I'm all, for, I'm all for Goon Barkov, by the way. <laughs> I tweeted that out the other day. Somebody said uh, because he wasn't nominated for the Lady Bing. I said I'm good with that. I'll take the Selkie and and I'm in with Goon Barkov. Yeah, Barkov with nine, Opozo with six, Reinhardt with six, Lundell with five, Cousins with six, Lusterina with six, Stenlin, Forsling with eight. Yeah, like every you said it earlier, no passengers yeah. uh, for, for the Panthers on yeah, this one. Like is sneaky physical. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't look that big on the ice, but I think you, you heard Aaron Eckblad say earlier this year that he's a he's a workout warrior and he's ripped. So he's he's sneaky physical. Yeah, yeah. Palmer said that he's usually the best when it comes to the fitness tests uh, for for the Panthers at every single year. Him and Montour, uh, yeah. those are two of the fittest uh, guys on the Panthers. But uh, three stars of, of the game for this one. Uh, I'm going to put Barkov uh, first. Uh, four points, two goals, two assists. Reinhardt, uh, four points, all of them assists. But I'm I'm going to the the third one is not a specific player. Uh, but even though the, it, it, some people might ask. The points don't line up. Why are you choosing this unit, not a player? Fourth line, once again, the influence the two goals uh, for for the Panthers and really changed the momentum for 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 them, and, and just really got it going. And sometimes when the goals go in, then then the floodgates open. And I mean, think about the Panthers uh, breaking their power play drought too. Even later, yeah. that that really helped with the with the Panthers and then getting under. Uh, the Bruins skin. So those are my uh, three stars of the game, but also an honorable mention Paul Maurice for switching the lines when, um, when necessary after the first goal by Boston. How about you? All, all excellent choices. I would not disagree with any of those, but I'll, I'll be a little bit different just to be different. I'm going to go Barkoff one Montour two and over Reinhardt three and Montour gets the tiebreaker for emulating the, uh, the Brad Marchand licking incident from several years ago <laughs> while they were being separated by the linesman, just sort of flicking the tongue out at him. I was like, I cracked up. I said, I my tour remembers that incident. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the tiebreaker for Monty getting uh, Mon money. Montour getting the second star from me. Yeah. On the, on the shorthanded goal, just the, uh, and then Kachuk going at, um, uh, in the face of coil after, after yeah. the, after the sixth one too. So it's just a little bit of uh, trying to play mind games for for them over when it, when it's a blowout like this and you know that you're going to see an opponent again. That's the yeah. thing. You, you it's Which we're going to get more in, into that in segment number three. Uh, so so uh, stay, stay tuned for that if you're, if you're listening. But uh, the moment where you thought we thought this game was won for the Panthers. I mean, the Bruins had a goal uh for prior to the intermission in game one and that was a that was a big turning point for them and it's like mm, uh, doesn't look likely for for a comeback but you think about for for gus forsling getting that goal right before the intermission and just the sigh of the the sigh of relief that must have been for the panthers going into mm -hmm. there like knowing that you don't have to do too much going into that third period and also this stat more goals in that second period by Jeremy Swayman than he gave up in the in the three games prior to that combined. And this is this is the time of year where you have to learn to play those low scoring games and and when you know that it's a tight tight checking. So that as far as uh, giving Panther fans and even the Panthers themselves a little bit of an exhale, Forsling's goal to make it three one. That's my moment. Yeah, um, I would I tended to agree with you, but I was still. 10% of me didn't trust the Bruins not to come back in that third period. But when Luster Reinen scores early in the fourth, I said, okay, I'm, I'm now I'm convinced. So mm -hmm. for me, it was the fourth goal, even though that, like I said before, that third goal was absolutely monstrous to go to the third with a two goal lead. But, you know, I, I, I just don't trust Boston not to mount a comeback. And, uh, but when Luster Reinen scored from Barkoff with the great feed, I said, okay, this this is in the win column. 
Yeah, and, and great to see more uh, depth scoring for, for the Panthers. I mean, you mentioned it about what beat the Panthers there uh, for them. And and in game one, depth scoring. Panthers got a big mix of, of everything. Um, you even saw it with, with the third line uh, for, for them. And also, the Panthers did not allow – I know they did not allow a, a shot for almost 20 minutes uh, between period two and three, but Pasternak, was, he did not – register a single shot uh, on goal on the night and uh, was very frustrated with Matthew Kachuk even went after him after the referees uh, tried separating them too so that's another thing yeah. uh, of, of note so so and but th this will be a good time to transition to segment number three we're going to discuss more about the misconducts galore that happened towards the end of the of, of the game and also ask this question are the Panthers now in the Bruins psyche? We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of, of, of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Third and final segment here on this Thursday, May 9th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Thursday where the Florida Panthers are coming off a 6-1 to one victory in game two of the second round against the Boston Bruins to tie the series at one. So the Boston Bruins, they did their job uh, stealing one for, for the Panthers. Now the Panthers... They, they have to do their job. Bet one of the best road teams in the NHL, 26 ro road wins for them, and now have an opportunity to steal one back uh, when when they visit the TD Garden on Friday. So, Frank, <laughs> with everything started with the with the with the Pat Maroon and Nick Cousins going at each other. Two rats uh, as, as for for in the, in the NHL. Two guys that that like we said in the beginning with Kachuk. But with Nick Cousins and Pat Maroon, if, if they're not on your if they're not on your team, you don't like them. And Leah Hextall during the broadcast was even talking about uh, that a lot of it was uh, premeditated when it was out of hand. And like I said at the very top, twelve misconducts uh, for 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 this one uh, in in the in 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 this in this game. And and think about it, how quickly they happen. Uh, the the fir the second set of misconducts happen. 11 seconds after 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 the goal after Bob made a save on JVR OEL and him going after it uh, Kulikov takes down uh Brazil and then uh after like you mentioned earlier um Montour getting in the face of Brad Marchand but we did not hear this one thing which I really really wanted to hear that referee number 7 Garrett Rank was the same exact official that refereed Panthers centers back in November everybody yeah. get the 10 minute misconduct well, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get to hear that, but I, at the same time, I feel like the his bosses might have had a little bit of a talk with him uh, right. and said, "No, well, that's not because, what you do." Be, right? Because a what he did in Ottawa is lazy refereeing. Yes, that's just lazy. Yes, you take the two or the four guys that are the main culprits and you give them the misconducts. Mm -hmm. right? You have two guys just grabbing onto each other and they got misconduct, not doing anything. And they got misconducts in Ottawa. Second, it starts to make a mockery of the game if you start throwing guys. You know, you're, you're out there. A team a team could be left with one defenseman. And the game's probably out of hand if, if, anyway, but it's still making a mockery of what are you going to do, play with four guys each for the rest of the game? I mean, mm -hmm. that's stupid. Um, so they did a much better job tonight of picking out the main instigators and the main guys that were that were going at it. Uh, so I thought it was a much better job on the part of Garrett Rank from that game in Ottawa. I was kind of, I, I didn't really realize that it was the same refs, but I, I knew we were going to hearken back to that game, given what happened tonight. Yeah, I, I I had to do a little bit of research. I'm thinking, 
I, because I've watched the I watched the replay so many times just for a few laughs there. I'm just thinking, man, this is the, the, I have to do some investigative uh, work here. But yes, it was Garrett well, Rank. Good work by you. Huh? Good work by you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, but also, and this relates to the next thing that we're gonna we're gonna talk about, uh, and it's uh just about what uh, game one last year. Panthers drop three one to the Boston Bruins. Come back and win six to two. Same, a little bit of the same thing last year, where except obviously you switch venues to Emirate Bank Arena this time around, where the Panthers have home ice and then the ability to respond. And then t- twelve players uh, go- going going to the going to the locker room to take an early shower uh, for for both teams. And, and I mean, I got to ask you with with the Panthers and just their ability to just not, not only to win by five goals, but how quickly some of them got. And with the fact that it was hard to even get through the zone for, for the, for the Bruins and a whole lot of one and dones, how much of the, how much uh, do you think the Panthers are in the Bruins uh, psyche after a night like tonight? I don't, I don't think a lot. I don't put a whole lot of stock in that kind of stuff for the most part, especially when it comes to a, to a team like Boston. Um, you know, our football coach at Florida Atlantic, Tom Herman, you know, he was got on our players once in Springs because guys were chirping at each other. And he said, you know, has that ever won a football game? Just no. the chirping. Okay. So I, I feel kind of the same way when you get in a team's head is when you kick their tail on the scoreboard. That's when you get in a team's head. So I, I just think Boston's too, too veteran a team. They, yeah, they do have some young guys in the lineup, but for the most part, I think they've got too many guys that have been around the block too long to put a whole lot of stock in that. Um, you know, I expect them to come out really hard in game three. They they were obviously a little embarrassed tonight because, uh, you know, you saw a bunch of cheap shots at the end. I think it was uh, Watherspoon after a whistle and Lundell's just skating behind the net. He whacks him in the back of the knee. And uh, Ryan Callahan, who just I – don't, I don't even want to get started on how biased he is as a broadcaster in this series, he said, Oh, that's just a love tap. Well, you should know better because that's the back of the knee. It's not a protected area. And it doesn't take much to take somebody down. All it takes is a little whack, especially when it's totally unsuspecting. So, you know, I thought Boston was really frustrated uh, that the game got out of hand and, you know, they didn't like some of the chirping by the, by the Panthers, but I, I fully expect them to come out flying in game three and the Panthers are going to have to, match that and absorb it and do what they did tonight. Yeah. And, uh, and if you're not too familiar with hockey equipment with the socks, uh, with the socks over, I mean, think about when Jonathan Huberto got hurt against the New Jersey devils in that um, preseason game. That's the part of the padding that wasn't protected for him. So whenever you have a little bit of a, of a tap there, I mean, you're going to, you're going to get some type of reaction. He's not looking. And also I believe if I'm not mistaken, that April 6th game in Boston, the the afternoon game, there was one slash uh, that went uncalled as a I, I don't I forget which player was going to the box too. So it's it's happened before in this uh, in this season series too. So that's another thing to look at about the you know whenever you do take your eyes off the off the play for even a little bit uh, too while you're trying to still gather numbers because I mean. They those referees don't necessarily have scorecards like football referees do, but you're still like keeping up uh, notes up here of of everything else when you have to have your head on a swivel with all the things that are having happening post whistle too. So yeah, that's well, another when thing. When those four players were tied up near the bench and Trent Fredericks throwing elbows in the back of Erod's head, <laughs> I mean, you know, like I said, they were frustrated. And Frederick, among the, the you know that big scrum, he's got his gloves off trying to punch loose to Ryan and. Mm-hmm. Ryan doesn't have his gloves off. He's not trying to fight him. So Boston definitely got frustrated tonight. Yeah, a, a happens when you are on the on the lo- losing end of things, and you're still trying to at least try to send a message uh, and and get and get things set set up for for game three and and all. But it's funny, uh, Paul Maurice, the quote master. Uh, I, I I do have to read a quote uh, here. For for from from what from what he said today, uh, he said he said if you quote if you buy your kid a sweater and you get bark off on the back of it, you can keep it for a long time. Close quote. Just talk about the leadership that bark off 
just continues to have on the ice consistently being the example. I mean, you think about that power play goal, creating defense into offense and getting a quick rush and just being sneaky with his stick lifts uh, and, and just out muscling guys too, and just setting the perfect example for uh, this team. Uh, what, what do you think of when you, when you hear that from uh, Mo? I, I absolutely agree. And you know what, if the Panthers in this particular era are going to win a Stanley cup, then Barkov's got to be at his best because when he is, he is an elite player. Uh, I, you know, there are some games and I don't know, I would never say he takes a game off because he always plays hard, but he doesn't always have that attack mindset uh, in his offensive game. He'll, he'll always give you a great defensive effort, but sometimes he, he doesn't have that attack mindset. And if the Panthers are going to win a cup, I think he needs to, to be the guy to lead them there. Yeah, no, no doubt. And uh, con continuing that Selkie Trophy play uh, that that he's done all season, all season long, and definitely continues to set the example uh, for the Panthers. And did it with four points uh, for, on the night. And just and a hey, it's uh it's it's now a best of five going going back to Boston. And really, that's the way to that's the way to think about it now mm -hmm. uh, for for the Panthers. Everything resets. And also Reinhardt spoke even in practice uh on uh on tuesday speaking about how the ebbs and flows of a series how even when the panthers were up 3-1 and they lose in tampa you feel like that the the series might might turn the other way but then you look back at it and say oh it's just a it, you just got to continue to play your game and still move on and and just continuing to turn the page and not stick in one moment too no, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, every series or most series are going to have an ebb and flow to it. And you can't overreact to one game either way, a win or a mm -hmm. loss. Um, you can't be like totally we stink or, oh, we're dominant. You, you, you've got to you've got to be even and say just we got to do the right things the next game. Like, for example, tonight in the first period, I thought Boston won a little a lot of the little battles even mm -hmm. though the Panthers had a lot of zone time, the Bruins were getting in those shooting lanes and blocking a bunch of shots. And as the game went on, Panthers started winning more of those little battles, which lead to big plays. So that's that's got to be their mindset. Let's just win those battles along the wall, win that key face off, that type of thing. Make the right play. Don't try a fancy pass. Just make the simple play. Make sure the puck gets out of the zone. Make sure the puck gets in the zone on offense. Uh, you know, it's it's the little things that, the devil's always in the details, Armando. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and little bits at a time as the Panthers try to just win, win it a little battles here and and make adjustments from period to period, shift to shift. That's really what it comes down to for the Panthers. But, Frank, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, recapping a 6-1 to one Panthers victory over the Boston Bruins, where the series is now tied at 1. Game 3, Friday night uh, from the TD Garden. Uh, so uh, thank you once again and tell everybody where they can follow you online. Yep. Always my pleasure, Armando. Um, on X, it's uh, at Frank J. Fort. Uh, you can find our television show at Florida Atlantic University on Valley Sports Florida. It's also on uh, FAUsports.com and on YouTube. So uh, we put out a, a new show every couple of weeks. we got our final show coming up for the spring on May 16th. We'll take a little hiatus for the summer. Uh, get a, get a little bit of time off, and then we'll we'll be back in mid August uh, as football starts to to wind up. Awesome! Thank thank you so much, Frank, and hope to see you again soon, my friend. All right, thanks, Armando. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Lockdown NHL Network, including Lockdown NHL, Lockdown Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Stu Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Frank Fort. And you've been listening to Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.